Welcome to the BBC News School report. But first for the environmental news. The scientists have been putting out warnings for the east coast of Australia because the Great Barrier Reef has been under um, attack and in danger because of global warming. What's happened is underwater heat um, waves have come in and destroying the environment there. So this means that not only will the Great but what do the young geographers think as well? For the issues for pollution, it's things like these, cars and also some boats, which are causing us pollution because of their fuels. So Miss Eagle, from the news of the destroying of the Great Barrier Reef. Mm. Um, just want some questions on you. Do you think the economy of Australia might go down as that um, the Great Barrier Reef is one of the biggest tourism places for Australia? Oh, 100%, absolutely. It's of great concern. Because um, obviously being a geography teacher, I would understand that with tourism, obviously that, that's supporting an awful lot of industries and they're called spin-off industries. So obviously the, the actual tourist sites and the people that, that take people to the Great Barrier Reef will be affected. But not only that, but then obviously things such as the hotels that support people, the transport networks and all the people that work within those, Okay, it's, it's going to have a massive effect. It's a great, great concern to me. And also, do you think there's any small ways or long-term ways of fixing this problem of global warming? Well, it depends what we're looking at. I mean, in terms of the actual problem that's affecting the coral reefs in Australia, it is climate change, isn't it? Yeah. And there's so much that can be done with regard to climate change. It does make me a little bit sad, though, when you look at the different solutions. So at a personal level, we can all change our lifestyles. And I was talking about this with my Year 11 class just last week. Um, we did our carbon footprints and um, we all worked out of our carbon footprint what percentage we are with relation to the kind of target for the UK. Most of us were double and my carbon footprint was one of the worst. So it's very sad when you look at actually in order to cure climate change, we are going to have to make some really massive decisions like should we have holidays abroad by flights, you know, by actually flying, should we in fact think about things like driving our cars less and they will have quite a big knock-on effect on our on our lifestyles and what we've got to ask ourselves I think is do we do things that we need or things that we want and at the moment I think a lot of people myself included in the UK okay, do the want yeah. as well as the need so we've got to try and find some sustainable solutions and some small things like turning lights off let's do that now might help Thank you, Miss Eagle, for the information. Thank you very much indeed. Young geographers think as well. I'm here with James and Finn. So, as young geography minds, do you think on the issue of the global warming and affecting the Great Barrier Reef, do you think the Australian economy might be affected from this lack of their big tourism? Um, well, tourism obviously affects quite a lot of the economy, so yeah, I think it will. Do you think they might be deeply affected as the sustainable, sustainable might not be there? Yeah, um, it will affect them kind of economically. Uh, it will affect the economy, but also environmentally it will kind of ruin it a bit, which isn't good. And also, just like people realise as you're young, um, and what you've just learned, do you think there are any ways you might think of fixing global warming and fixing the Great Barrier Reef? Uh, cutting down on carbon emissions Cut. around the area. So. Yeah, you don't want uh, greenhouse gases to get trapped in the atmosphere, which obviously uh, yeah, doesn't help yeah. with global warming. Okay, thanks. So I'm here with Laura and Kate. So you are two young geographers. Um, on the crisis of the global warming hurting the Great Barrier Reef, do you think that the Australian economy might be affected by this big tourism going down? Uh, yeah, because like, if you don't have fish to look at, everyone's going to get bored. So there'll be nobody there, and then like Australia like, oh, won't have any money because all of the money from the tourists won't be there because the tourists are probably go to America. So do you think everyone in America, it's like all the shops will get very like, like will have to shut down because they're not getting anyone coming to Australia? Uh, 
Uh, that might be true because I guess if there's no tourists then or gift shops and cafes might have to close down because there won't be as many tourists to actually buy from them. Um, and also, as young geographers, do you have any ways you think that might long term or short term might fix um, the global warming crisis to help with that Great Barrier Reef? Build a massive bridge. <laughs> 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 um, um, well, I'm not sure really. <laughs> okay, I'm that's right. The fridge, fridge thing. Yes, the fridge. Thank you. So I'm here with Sam and Josh, and I want to know, do you think the new Beauty and the Beast film will be better than the classical Beauty and the Beast? To be honest, I've never seen it. Why not? Um, I'm not into that sort of movies. I don't know, to be honest, because the classics are always really good. Uh, do you think the new Beauty and the Beast trailer looks good? Yeah, it looks alright. Um, solid 5 out of 10. I didn't rate it to be honest. Is it not the type of thing you're interested in or have you just not really been bothered about watching it? I'm just not bothered to be honest. Okay, well thank you for your time. Do you think our school is lucky enough to have a learning block um, to help people with disabilities? I think they're very lucky. They've got the learning support department and they've also got the ASD resource which supports children who are on the autistic spectrum. There are a number of NSAs who support the children in class on a one-to-one -one basis and also support them in the learning support department and in the resource. So do you think that um, the Wimbledon School does achieve um, spreading to a wide um, helping of different abilities and all the students aren't in our school? Yes, I certainly do. Thank you. So I'm here with Miss Rajansky and I want to know, do you think the new Beauty and the Beast will be better than the classical Beauty and the Beast? Uh, oui, je pense. Les effets spéciaux des nouveaux films sont vraiment très intéressants. Um, do you think the new Beauty and the Beast trailer looks good? Uh, je ne suis pas sûre de l'avoir vu, uh, mais j'aime beaucoup les affiches. Um, and also, you are a French teacher, and the tale of Beauty and the Beast is set in France. Do you think it's like nice to have a film set in a country that you're obviously quite familiar with? Oui, en effet, mais je ne suis pas sûre que euh, c'est filmé en France. Mais c'est très intéressant d'avoir l'élément culturel. Merci. De rien. Bonne journée. So I'm here with Alicia today. Um, do you think you're lucky to be in a school that can help you with um, some problems that you need? Yeah. Do you think they do a really good job and you're really proud that, that you can come to a place that can do so? Yeah. Do you think that they really range and help you with everything? Yeah. And they do a good job? Yeah. Okay, thank you. We're the head of the Windsor School, Mr McAvener, and we would like to know what's your opinion on homework. Okay, uh, good morning everybody. Yes, I think homework is really valuable uh, if it is done for the right reasons and it's got to be about developing uh, the capacity of the person who's doing it to, to think for themselves. So it's about independent learning and I think all people need that chance to do that. Do you believe that we should have more or less homework? No, I think it, it's not about more or less, it's about more targeted homework. Homework which the, the children have a stake in, in planning for themselves, so at least they uh, have got a vested interest in doing it. It's about the things that they really want to know and which will help them with the study in that subject. In your opinion, what are the advantages of homework? It, it, again, it's about making sure that children become independent and think for themselves and become lifelong learners. And I think that's key, is that every child who leaves here, I want them to continue to learn when they finish uh, into adulthood and I think homework gives that opportunity. Thank you. You're welcome. What is your opinion on homework? Rubbish. It should be illegal. Do you think we should have more or less? Less. None. We do too much work in school anyway. Do you think it will be better if we have no homework? Yes. And the reason why is? I think we shouldn't get as much homework, like not completely because we still do need to like revise and stuff. So. Um, because we do enough work in school and it's like we may as well do another hour in school if we have to do enough work. Okay, thank you. You are welcome. So today we're here with Mr. Lander and we're going to get your opinion on homework. Excellent. So what is your opinion on homework? What's your opinion on homework? Bidmas says he thinks it's mostly a good thing. 
Do you think that there should be more or less homework? What do you reckon, Bidmas? Perhaps about the same amount in year 10 or 11. Or perhaps thinking about when we go into primary school, perhaps it might not be such a good thing to have as much. But in secondary school, some homework is probably good. Hello and welcome to the weather. On Thursday, it will be a lovely warm spring. Well, that's what the British are going to say anyway. We'll have a cloudy day with a high of 10 and a low of 5. Like I said, a warm English day. Tomorrow will be another cloudy day. It will have a high of 11 and a low of 8. Thank you. Back to the studio.